Wiring diagrams are the road maps for the electrical systems on a passenger vehicle. They show the route of the power flow from the source through the switches and loads to the ground. Just as you learn to read traffic signs as you learn to drive, understanding the symbols in a wiring diagram will help you trace the route of power through the circuits. Power flow starts at the battery. The symbol for a battery is six heavy lines, each separated by six small lines. Each of the heavy lines in the icon represents one cell of a six-cell 12-volt battery. A fuse or fusible link is used to protect a circuit against a high current flow that could damage the circuit. A fuse is represented by a wavy line between two circles. While a fusible link includes the symbol for a fuse inside a rectangular box. Circuit breakers can be used instead of fuses. A circuit breaker is shown as a smile-shaped black line over two black dots. Diodes are often used as one-way streets. Diodes allow the flow of current in one direction only and will not allow the flow of current in the opposite direction. The symbol for a diode is a dark triangle pointed to a perpendicular line. The direction of the triangle point is the direction of current flow through the diode. A light emitting diode is a diode that acts as a lamp, illuminating when current is flowing through the diode. The symbol for a light emitting diode is the same symbol as a diode enclosed in a circle. A resistor is often used to lower current flow through a circuit. The symbol for a resistor is a diagonally slashed line that is connected on each end of the slashes. Variable resistors, or resistors that vary resistance in response to a change in conditions, are shown as the symbol for a resistor inside a rectangular box. A diagonal arrow through the resistor indicates that resistance increases from low to high through the resistor. Potentiometers measure the change in voltage based on the position of a sensing needle on a variable resistance scale. The symbol for a potentiometer is that of a variable resistor with a vertical line from the lower center of the box to the center of the resistor. Thermistors are variable resistors that change their resistance in response to temperature. Thermistors can either be positive coefficient, meaning they increase in resistance as temperature increases, or they can be negative coefficient, meaning they decrease in resistance as temperature increases. A thermistor is shown in the wiring diagrams as the symbol for a resistor enclosed in an oval. Capacitors are used to store electric charge like a small battery, but they discharge quickly when power is removed. They're used in circuits to filter noise and prevent voltage spikes. Capacitors are usually part of a larger component and not shown in wiring diagrams. Switches are used to turn a circuit or load on or off. A switch allows current to flow through a circuit when it is closed and does not allow current to flow through the circuit when it is open. The symbols for switches vary depending on the type of switch. A normally open switch that is usually off is shown as an open gate or as a rectangular bar over two circles. On a normally open switch, the bar and circles are shown as outlines only. A normally closed switch, one that is usually on, is shown as a closed gate between two dark gatepost circles, or as a heavy black bar that is across the tops of two black circles. A relay is an electromagnetic switch that is used to control high current circuits. The symbol for a relay is a box with the electromagnet shown as a coil of wire. A normally open relay has the symbol for a normally open switch next to the symbol of a coil. A normally closed relay has the symbol for a normally closed switch next to the symbol for the coil. A transistor is an electrical switch that allows the flow of current through a circuit in one direction as a control current is applied to the base of the transistor. The symbol for a transistor is a perpendicular line that has a line on one side representing the base and a V-shaped line pointed to the perpendicular on the other side. An arrow on one side of the V indicates the direction of current flow when the control current is applied to the base. The common symbols for the loads that use electrical power are the symbols for motors and light bulbs.
A motor is shown in the wiring diagrams as the letter M inside a circle. On each side of the circle are two smaller boxes. Single filament light bulbs are shown as a coil of wire inside a circle, while dual filament bulbs have two coils of wire inside a circle. Other devices such as rear window defogger grids and similar dedicated devices are usually shown as square or rectangular boxes that are labeled. Wiring diagrams and schematics typically identify the wires in a circuit by color and size. A chart in the repair manual will help you decipher the colors of the wires. A typical color chart lists the colors as B for black, W for white, R for red, P for pink, PU for purple, L for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, and GY for gray. Other colors are often used as well. Because of the number of circuits in a car, the limited number of primary colors is added to by the use of stripes on the wires. Where stripes are used, the main color of the wire is shown first, followed by a slash and the color symbol for the stripe. As an example, a green wire with a purple stripe would be shown as G slash PU. In addition to color, wires are identified by their diameter. Wire diameters are graded in gauges on some vehicles, or the diameter of the wire is shown in millimeters on other vehicles. The lower the gauge of a wire, the larger the diameter. The larger the diameter of the wire, the less resistance to current flow. For example, the wire to a fusible link may be a thicker diameter 8 gauge wire, while a lamp bulb would have a smaller diameter 14 gauge wire carrying current to the bulb. Connectors, as the name implies, connect loads in a circuit to the wires that supply power and ground. Connectors are usually numbered in a wiring harness. The number typically uses a letter to distinguish the harness or group of wires that the connector is located in, followed by the number for that specific connector. The typical harness designations are E for engine harness and M or B for main or body harness. If letters are not used to identify the harness connectors, manufacturers typically group harness connectors in number series. For example, engine harness connectors are numbered from 100 to 199. Body connectors are numbered from 200 to 299, and so on. The terminals of the connectors are often numbered, either on the connector or in the repair manual. Wiring diagrams often differ on how a connector is displayed but one common way to show terminals is by identifying the harness side of the connector separately from the terminal or load side of the connector. Most repair manuals show the locations of the connectors and the harnesses to make locating the connectors easier. Wiring harnesses are connected together by the use of junction blocks. Large junction blocks are often referred to as SMJs or super multiple junctions. Junction blocks use male and female terminals to connect the wires of the different harnesses and are often bolted together. The terminals in the junction blocks are numbered for identification, either on the block itself or in the repair manual. Most repair manuals show the two halves of a junction block side by side. To determine which terminals align, you have to look at the layout as two facing pages of an open book. The terminals on the outer left and right edges go together as do the terminals on the inner left and right sides of the pages. Splices differ from connectors and junction blocks in that they join wires with a solder joint. Splices are often used to join several wires to a common ground. Splices are usually, though not always, insulated with heat shrink tube wrapping. Splices where shown in wiring diagrams are usually shown as a connector is with the letter S before a number indicating that it is a splice and not a connector. All circuits need a ground to complete the circuit. In wiring diagrams, the ground is shown as an inverted letter T with two or more smaller lines under the bottom forming a loose triangle shape. As with connectors, many repair manuals have a page dedicated to showing the location of the grounds in the engine and body harnesses. Just like your trusty digital multimeter, the wiring diagram is also a diagnostic tool. Wiring diagrams illustrate how the circuits are designed and where the components are located on the vehicle. If you're not familiar with a wiring diagram, 
always begin with the general information section of the repair manual. The general information section usually explains how the wiring diagram is organized, and it shows you how to read a schematic step by step. As we saw in the earlier video, this section will help you understand the meaning of the various numbers and symbols like connector codes, ground points and numbers, wire color codes and connector symbols. And it even shows you where wiring harnesses and components are located on the vehicle. Spending a few minutes reviewing the general information section will help you to fix it right the first time. Let's take a look at how we can use the information in the wiring diagram to troubleshoot a problem with a vehicle that has an inoperative engine coolant temperature gauge. The first step of the troubleshooting procedure is to use the index of the repair manual to find the correct wiring diagram or schematic for the coolant temperature gauge circuit. Some repair manuals offer multiple indexes, such as an alphabetical index in the rear of the book and a separate index in the electrical section. Either way, you can use whichever is easiest for you as the results should be the same. Because the gauge is part of the instrument cluster or combination meter, let's go to that page. This diagram shows the whole instrument cluster. Since the other gauges and indicators are working normally, we can eliminate everything else on this page and focus on the temperature gauge circuit only. There, that's better. On most wiring diagrams, the power source is always at the top of the page and the ground is at the bottom. Let's start at the top and trace the power side of this circuit. From the positive battery terminal, current flows through the main fuse, the ignition key fuse, the ignition switch, and the meter fuse to the gauge. On the ground side, current flows from the gauge through the engine coolant temperature sensor and goes back to the battery through the ground return path. Now let's analyze what we know about the circuit. This is a simple series circuit protected by three fuses. The circuit is controlled on the power side by the ignition switch. But it's also controlled on the ground side by the engine coolant temperature sensor. The sensor is a negative coefficient thermal resistor or thermistor. As coolant temperature increases, resistance in the sensor decreases. The next step is to test the circuit at a point that gives you the most information with the least amount of work. We call this dividing the circuit. By looking at this diagram, the best place to divide this circuit in half is at connector B1-31. This is where the harness connects to the sensor. If we measured voltage at this connector with the ignition key on, our reading should be close to battery voltage. We have a reading of 12 volts. That means this portion of the circuit up to the thermistor is okay. If the voltmeter reads zero volts, the problem would have to be between the sensor and the battery. Because we have the correct voltage at connector B1-31, the next step would be to check the remaining half of the circuit, which is the ground side. We can use an ohmmeter to check the resistance of the sending unit. We found the problem. The sending unit is open-circuited. <laughs> 